You're just one secret sauce technique away from creating the best motion graphics. And this technique is simply called camera depth movement. And by unlocking this hidden power in After Effects, you'll be able to take your work from boring to cinematic in no time. So let's get started. All right, there's many things that you can create with camera depth, but to help first visualize how professional camera movement works, let's create a practical motion graphic scene using only simple shapes first. Then of course, after I promise, we'll dive into this epic scene. So we need to make a scene 3D and we can do this with any simple shape, title, or literally any type of image or graphic, but you just need to make the layer 3D. And if you want, you can set its Y rotation to 90 degrees and I'll reposition it off to say the side like so. For this, I'll create some additional duplicates and position them to create this noticeable separation. And just like any typical motion graphic, we can animate say their position, for example, to slide over. By alt clicking the stopwatch, I'll add the loop out ping pong expression to each copy's position and this will create a back and forth animation and then we can offset each layer in the timeline by a frame or two but back on the core topic to make a six scene do we really need z depth since we've already added position keyframes let's pre-compose these rectangles then when that's done let's click on continuously rasterize and make the layer 3d again now we can push this back into z position space to further our depth and let's continue to duplicate and Z position this back as many times as you need or until at least your computer melts. All right, perfect. Now let's actually move on to the camera movement by creating, you guessed it, a camera. And all we have to do is add a keyframe for our position. And I also like adding a keyframe for point of interest for good measure. And then we can use the dolly towards cursor tool to push the camera all the way down the hallway. And that's essentially depth in a nutshell. Keep in mind, you may always revisit and expand and push more layers down your scene as well. And one of the best parts of the camera is enabling depth of field and adjusting the aperture and blur level to create that cinematic blur. But try messing around with the focus distance to determine where your focus will lie. And that's essentially the basic rundown on camera movement. But now you have an awesome motion graphic scene. The same tactics can actually be employed with scenes where you only have, say, JPEG or PNG images. Just make those layers 3D as before, and then you can push them forward or back in Z position space, and then you create your camera movement, and now nothing will ever hold you back. However, next up, I'm gonna show you how to create this epic seamless infinite movement where you can combine multiple scenes of depth together. And ensure you always produce epic work in no time with our free template, seamless transitions, and customizable motion graphics all right here in our Motion Duck extension. You can add thousands of templates and presets directly into your project and tailor them to fit and tailor them to fit your needs in seconds. So keep your creative flow going with these countless assets linked below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting this channel. So thank you very much. All right, to create detailed animated scenes like this, I highly suggest working with vector graphics as you can zoom into these bad boys without losing any quality. And they're also very easy to get your hands on. For example, you can search for free vectors and find pretty much whatever you need. But with vector graphics, you can open these up in Adobe Illustrator, which comes a part of the Creative Cloud. And then you can start grouping objects that you won't have individual control over in After Effects in their own Illustrator layers. Then when you're done, just save this as an Illustrator document. Then you can open this as a composition in After Effects and then you may need to adjust the composition size and then scale your graphics as needed. But this gives you the ultimate control over each object in your scene. And overall, this is just a professional way to approach these types of projects. Now, I understand it may feel like a completely different ball game, but the steps for creating depth and camera movement are very similar. First, you're gonna make all your layers 3D. And for this, I like to use two views and set the second view to top. And when that's set up, I would start by pushing your background or your furthest object to a Z position of around 10,000 points and then scale it up. So your foreground objects will be at a Z depth of say zero, which creates this massive range for your future camera to move through. Now with this in mind, we're gonna go ahead and push each layer back within the Z position range and then scale it back up to that composition size. And if this is done correctly, you'll notice that there will be gaps among each of your layers. Great. 
And since these are vectors, if you click continuously rasterize, this will preserve the image quality of each scaled up layer. And that, you know, that's just beautiful, right? <laughs> now, you're welcome to animate your objects however you need. You know, I really like the puppet pen tool for distortion. But however, you can duplicate objects that you already have in your scene and say recycle them into your Z depth to help build out a more detailed composition in no time. From here, you could just go do your camera movement. But if you have multiple scenes, don't do the camera movement yet. Build out your other scenes in their own compositions and then place them together into a single master comp. But when that's done, be sure to click on continuously rasterize and make those scene layers 3D. Basically, it's like having all these layers in just two organized groups, which you know is great because when you create your camera, you can then animate the position and the point of interest with any of the camera tools. And then you'll see that you're retaining all that 3D data, which is great for organization. You know, my mind would just explode if this wasn't like this. Now, to push the camera into, say, another scene, you're going to need to reposition that comp. So you could place a scene under, say, your first comp. Or, like me, we can push this forward in Z space by the value of the most pushback object in that scene. Now, as you continue to use the camera tool here, we are pushed into the new scene. Great, but it's just not perfect yet. Our goal now is to try to create the best seamless cut that we can. If there's a background in your new scene, I would animate its opacity from zero to 100% to create that natural fade for our camera to move through. Additionally, think how you can place an object in the back of your scene that could be a transition foreground element like this cloud, for example. This will help further hide the unnatural cut between two opposing scenes. And don't forget to turn on motion blur for all your scene layers. And that's absolutely amazing what we can do. For depth of field, you may want to keyframe the focus distance to adjust what your camera has blurred out as you jump through scene to scene. But overall, there's nothing that can stop you now. Subscribe to be the best and always be creative.